Uh, just before we talk about the steel sector, on Monday this week, uh, you were at a summit for Nigerian miners and geologists, I believe. Geoscientists. Geoscientists. Uh, it held this Monday. And uh, now you talked about what your ministry is doing. You talked about uh, the vision. Uh, you talked about capacity building and all of that. But then uh, Michelle Arian, who is the EU ambassador to Nigeria, also noted a couple of uh, problems. Very good issue. Uh, some, you know, challenges, as it were. He talked about import substitution, which Nigeria must address. Absolutely. And he said that uh, he gave the example of bitumen, mm -hmm. that Nigeria was still importing bitumen and some stones. Why are we importing bitumen? I just talked about it because we dropped the ball. Um, we're the th third largest reserve of bitumen in the world. A lot of work has been done on bitumen way before my time. In fact, the first bitumen study was done by Shell de Assi in 1903. But you're right. It covers a stretch from Edo State, Ondo State, Ogun State, and then a little bit of Lagos. It's a shocker. It is a shocker, but we're addressing that. And in the shortest possible time, we're going to have an expression of interest on bitumen out because we believe that we can reduce significantly. Give us the a time import. frame. Well, the time frame for bitumen, we believe in the next one year, we would have sorted out a whole range of things on, on the bitumen front. Uh, and what we're going for first is bitumen for asphalt production, mm -hmm. which can address road construction and several other additives. Uh, that bitumen will be Even then, it's still mind-boggling that, you know, with all our reserves of bitumen, well, we are importing bitumen. That's what oil did to us as a country. Because we generated so much money from oil, it was easier to import everything, including toothpick. Mm. So that's what caused the crisis, and that's what the Buhari administration is determined to address by saying, okay, We've been here, but thus far, no further. You've had the story of cement. Who ever thought that Nigeria could be self-sufficient in cement production to the point of exporting cement? It's the same limestone that has always been here. And that just shows us that we can do what has been done in the cement field, in the, in the bitumen field, in the dimension stones field. Mm. Let's talk steel now because we don't have a lot of time uh premium steel and mines limited is now the owner of delta steel company Omi Alaja. i'm right right that's correct well um i believe that premium steel currently occupies it but i also believe that there's a litigation ongoing on it mm -hmm. okay well it's gone through a series of ownership mm -hmm. issues we it know has. that at one point amcon took it over there was a receiver it was amcon that took it over and i believe it was amcon that eventually gave it to premium okay now the federal government on this particular one seems to have you know let let go of it. it it doesn't seem to be concerned about the amount of investment that it has made in that sector especially on that company why is this the case? That's not completely correct. We've not let go of it. As a matter of fact, when I go to Delta, I'm going to be visiting uh, Delta Steel Company in Alaja. Uh, what has happened is that this is the result of the privatization process. The ministry has divested from the Alaja Steel Company. When are you going to Delta State? When am I going to Delta State? I actually don't have that on the top of my head, but I'm going to Delta State in April, uh, and I am going to go to premium uh, to, to, to the company that you just referred to. For us, we've fulfilled our own legal obligation, but we still have some obligation to the retired workers uh, who at, uh, at the, the uh, 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 position severed from, from that company. However, you can't blame government for that. Government took a decision that they were going to divest from the ownership of... No matter how shady the privatization deal was? Well, I don't... I, 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 I wouldn't like to comment on the privatization deal because that is what resulted in Amcon taking it over. Mm. Let's and talk Amcon about... Amcon has undertaken its responsibility in that regard. We have no reason not to want to support anyone who has bought into that company if there are issues that requires governmental support. 
we're, we're, there, we're there to do that. Ajao Kuta is the next big one. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that negotiations were on, mm -hmm. and negotiations are over. Mm -hmm. Ajao Kuta is back mm -hmm. in the hands of the federal government. Mm -hmm. Now, you say that there's no money to be expended on steel mills. Eventually, you will have to privatize Ajao Kuta. But it's taken a while now for the bids to come out. Why? It's not taking a while. Uh, the agreement we sign also has steps, uh, and there's a timetable that we're following. What basically we must do is ensure that we undertook due diligence on the iron ore mining corporation, because that's what the agreement says we must give back to the global infrastructure steel holdings that originally took the concession of both Ajao Kuta and Itakwe. And it is on the basis of completing that that we retrieve it, uh, Ajakuto back and put it up for uh, expression of interest. So it's not taking longer than we expected it would take. How soon is the privatization on that going to be? Very, public? very, very soon. I don't know whether it's going to be privatization or commercialization, but I do know that government is not going to be the one that will run it. Quickly on this one, you did mention that you were once governor and you're governor of Ikiti State. You have currently sued some members of you know, the government, the current government in Ikiti State over libel and defamation of character. But they say that your actions while you were governor has made them uh, be blacklisted from UBEX uh, special funds. You have not put out your own side of the story. Well, um, that's why it's in court. I'm sure the opportunity will come for Ikiti to prove how my government allowed the kids to be blacklisted because I know that that is a distortion of the fact. It never happened, and everything that we did was in accordance with the UBEC law. But I don't want to get into any uh, uh, exchange over whether I am right or not. I have sued for libel. It's up to a kitty state to come and defend it. Well, it's not even a kitty that I sued. I sued specific individuals mm -hmm. who libeled me by saying that I gave President Buhari 1.5 billion naira for his election mm -hmm. and that I misappropriated 852 million naira UBEC fund. The onus is not on me. I'm the one being libeled here. The onus is on those characters to come to court and prove that this person is actually not a credible person of integrity and we have incontrovertible information to prove everything we've said. We have the bank account through which he transferred money to candidate Buhari. We have the evidence of what he utilized the state UBEC fund for. That for me, I, I'm, I'm in a very, very safe and secure position until they go out there and prove their case. What is important to me is my own name. Dr. Kerry, if I may, we must close at this point. Yeah. I have to thank you for coming on Hard Copy. Thank you for having me. I thought we were going to talk exclusively mining, but knowing you, Mark, but you still got in something else. <laughs> well, that's the program tonight. Thank you for watching. We look forward to feedback from you using the handles on your screen. I'm Maupe Ogun. See you next week.